So far, we've only talked we've only talked about a couple of the players in this process of DNA replication. We've talked about the helicase that unzips the parental DNA strands. We talked about the single strand binding proteins that stabilize single stranded DNA, and we talked about the topoisomerase, which will um, correct some of the overwinding of the DNA ahead of the replication bubble. But honestly, we haven't made any new DNA yet. The enzyme that's uh, critical for making the new DNA polynucleotide strand is an enzyme that's called DNA polymerase. Now, DNA polymerase is a diva, right? So think of rock stars that have to have certain things in their dressing rooms before you know they can even think about going on stage uh, for their performance, right? They need a certain smell of lotion or satin pillows or only green M&Ms, right? Something strange like that. Well, DNA polymerases are very much like that. They have certain criteria that need to be met in order for them to do their job. The first thing is that DNA polymerases cannot start from scratch. They can't just hop onto a DNA template strand and start adding new nucleotides. They need some sort of platform to build off of. And so there's another enzyme that needs to come in first before the DNA polymerase can come in and do its job. And this enzyme, we'll go through it on the next slide, but this is a, an enzyme that's called primase. And what the primase does is it creates this platform for the DNA polymerase to work from. This platform is called a primer. So what the primase does is it comes in and it binds to the DNA template strand and it reads the nucleotides on the DNA template and it adds RNA nucleotides to match in a complementary fashion to build a short little segment of RNA that's called a primer and that will serve as this platform for the DNA polymerase to start adding new DNA nucleotides to to build the new DNA strand. The primers are really short. They're usually five to ten nucleotides long and they're built always in a five prime to three prime direction, meaning that the primase will always be adding new DNA, sorry, new RNA nucleotides to the free three prime end of that RNA primer. Now going along that theme, the DNA polymerase also can only add to a three prime end. So the primase, the DNA polymerase, they both run in the same direction. They create new nucleic acid strands from the five prime end to the three prime end. So always adding to a three prime end. Um, so again, some of the criteria for a DNA polymerase, right? It's going to be the enzyme that's going to catalyze the elongation of the new DNA at the replication fork. It requires a primer, so a platform to jump off of, and obviously it's gonna need a DNA template strand, right? Because otherwise it's not gonna know what nucleotides are supposed to come after the previous one. Um, and on top of that, the DNA polymerase only runs in one direction, right? Only five prime to three prime. It can only add new nucleotides to that free three prime end of the primer or the existing DNA strand that's a, that it has already built. So on this slide, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the chemical reaction that DNA polymerite, polymerase catalyzes. And it looks like a complex slide, but we'll walk through it. Really all this is showing you is uh, a chemical reaction. So we've got on the left hand side our reactants. We've got an arrow showing the progress of the reaction to the right hand side. And on the right hand side we have the products. DNA polymerase is written above the arrow because this is the enzyme that will catalyze this chemical reaction. And so the reactants that we're starting out with are the DNA here, the double strand DNA. So here's a new strand in light blue that's being built and the template strand, the original parental strand in darker blue. And then we've got a new nucleotide that's going to be added to the new strand um, based on what the template strand is showing. So in the template strand, we've got an adenine. So DNA polymerase knows, okay, I'm gonna have to match a thymine with an adenine. So the nucleotide that it's gonna add here is a thymine nucleotide. Now you'll notice the thymine nucleotide has multiple parts to it. Right? We've looked at the structure of a nucleotide earlier in the semester, but this is a good place to review. Right? We've got your nitrogenous base, which is going to be added to a pentose sugar, which then is also attached to, in this case, a triphosphate tail. 
This whole structure here is going to be called DTTP. So I've drawn DTTP here on uh, the screen for you. The first letter, the D, stands for deoxyribose. This indicates that the sugar in this nucleotide is deoxyribose, uh, and this, this is a DNA nucleotide. The first T here stands for thymine. This tells you which nitrogenous base is part of this nucleotide. And then lastly, the TP stands for triphosphate, indicating that there are three phosphates attached in a tail to this nucleotide. So using the DTTP would allow the DNA polymerase to add a thymine in that position along the new polynucleotide strand. Now, the DNA polymerase isn't only going to add thymines, right? It needs to add adenines and guanines and cytosines. And so there are going to be three other nucleotides for the DNA polymerase to use. So there's DATP, there is DCTP, and the last one, you can guess, GTP, DGTP, sorry, DGTP, right? So you got thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. And these are all nucleotides for DNA. RNA, honestly, very similar. RNA nucleotides, if you're building those, same thing except we um, don't add the D uh, for the deoxyribose. Well, in RNA, it's ribose. And so um, the deoxy isn't present, so you just eliminate um, the D. And then in RNA, right, we've got then just Didn't want to do that. We've got GTP. We've got CTP. We've got ATP. How crazy is that? ATP, that energy rich molecule that cells use to drive cellular work, is actually an RNA nucleotide. Who knew? And then remember, RNAs don't have thymines, so you're going to have UTP or your uracil there. Going back to the slide. Uh, we're looking now at this chemical reaction of the DNA polymerase adding new nucleotides to this growing um, strand, polynucleotide nucleotide strand that it's building um, to match complementarily the template strand. Um, so in this case, the DNA polymerase will match the thymine with the adenine on the template strand, and it will help to catalyze the reaction of actually cutting off the last two phosphates off of the nucleotide. Those two phosphates are going to leave as pyrophosphate, and instead this um, phosphate that's closest to the sugar is then going to be covalently bonded to the sugar of the previous nucleotide here, um, forming uh, that covalent bond or that phosphodiester linkage that we learned about earlier in the semester. And so now the DNA polymerase has successfully lengthened this new DNA strand by one nucleotide. And so it would move one space down now and read uh, the next open nucleotide on the template. So in this case, we have um, a cytosine in the template. So you know C's match with G's. So in this case, the DNA polymerase would add a DGTP um, to as the next nucleotide um, in line for lengthening uh, this new strand.